Hello, welcome everyone. I have a presentation. My name's Ariana Badley. I'm Dean of Research uh, at UAL. First of all, very basic information. We are one university. The University of Arts London is one institution, but it is made up of six very famous colleges. We have 19,000 students from everywhere. Um, and our colleges um, have nuances and characters of their own, but we all work collaboratively, collaboratively to give us best an experience we can of uh, the research that's going on across the university. Next slide, please. Um, one of the ways that we work collaboratively, collaboratively, I'm really having problems with collaboration. <laughs> one of the works, ways that we work collaboratively across the university uh, is through shared interests in terms of wider themes that cut across the specific subject areas uh, and link probably more closely to some of the interests of our PhD students. Uh, and the four that we've been committed to for the last uh, eight, nine years are, are these four here that I've put up on the screen. Living with environmental change, lifelong health and well-being, digital futures and community resilience. And these are ideas that we share with each other, whatever our disciplines, whether we're working in sound art, fine art, design or fashion. Next. Um, another part of the cross university collaboration that sits outside of colleges is uh, a new initiative that we've developed, and that is University of the Arts London Institutes. Currently, we have three. We have a couple more that are going to come on stream in the next year, but at the moment, the ones that are there to host activities that might be of most interest to uh, future PhD students are these three that I have on the slide. The Decolonizing Arts Institute, the Social Design Institute, and the Creative Computing Institute. Now, these institutes, again, do not have college specific uh, affi um, locations, but they often work very closely with all the colleges uh, and particularly with some of the research centres. So Decolonising Arts works particularly closely at the moment with After All and uh, the Centre for Transnational Art, Identity and Nation. Uh, the Social Design Institute works very closely with the Design Against Crime Research Centre, the Centre of Fashion uh, and Sustainability and the Centre for Circular Design and the Creative Computing Institute. While it's a standalone institute which has its own undergraduate degrees, which is quite different for some of the other institutes, it links in to work across the university. Next. So outside of the, the shared themes and the institutes which pull together uh, a web of ideas and, and, and conversations across all the colleges. We have the research centres uh, that host a series of events, activities, symposia, uh, exhibitions, uh, discussion fora uh, for our PhD students. Um, the first one I got up here is After All, which is a uh, probably known to you as a, a, a publishing organisation that explores uh, issues around um, fine art practice. Next. After all is based uh, at Central St Martins. The Creative Research and Sound Art pra Practice Research Centre is based at the London College of Communication, where it links very closely with some of the masters and undergraduate courses in sound arts and has become a world renowned centre for sound art. Next. The Centre for Fashion Curation uh, is based at the London College of Fashion um, and links in with, with, with other curatorial interests across the university, but is very specifically focused on fashion. Next. The Centre for Sustainable Fashion, also at the London College of Fashion, uh, is one of the um, more established of all our research centres and has had an enormous impact, not just within the university, but within the world outside uh, and has helped set the agenda for the London College of Fashion overall. Next. Design Against Crime, again, one of our very long standing research centres, uh, is based at Central St Martins 
Uh, and as I said before, it works closely with some of the uh, projects that are within the Social Design Institute, but has its own very specific uh, identity. Next. Photography in the Archive is based at the London College of Communication um, and links closely with our archives and special collections work. And uh, as I was saying with the Centre for Fashion Curation, we have a particular interest at research level in the exploration of exhibitions, collections, archives and different types of resources. And photography in the archive is a very important aspect of that. Next. Uh, the Centre for Circular Design is based at uh, Chelsea. Uh, at Chelsea, I should have said at the very beginning, Chelsea, Camberwell and Wimbledon are our smallest colleges and operationally they often do things together and they share management teams. Uh, but the Centre for Circular Design um, has connections, good connections across with the uh, uh, London College of Fashion and with uh, scholars in uh, Central St Martins, but emerged from the textile courses at Chelsea. Next. And then uh, lastly, the, the Centre for Transnational Art, Identity and Nation um, is, is also based uh, at Chelsea. It has membership from actually across the university, all the colleges. Uh, it's one of the larger of the uh, research centres and, and works very closely with the Decolonising Arts Institute. Next. Um, so I just wanted to introduce those basic uh, um, that basic structure for supporting PhD work. Uh, those are the locations where you can go to and find out about our key supervisors, the different um, types of work that's going on, the different kinds of PhD students that are attached to those centres uh, or those institutes. Please do go to our website to find out more. Uh, it'd be very useful if you're thinking of applying uh, to UAL that you get a sense of which of these areas you'll feel most at home with and uh, you'll, you'll want to join uh, a, 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 as a key participant. Hello everybody, my name is Felicity Coleman. I am the Associate Dean of Research at the London College of Fashion. So what do we do at London College of Fashion? Why should you come and do your PhD here? LCF, as we like to call it. We like to think about fashion and textiles, not just in terms of those obvious design markers, but we think about fashion and textiles in terms of style, in terms of behaviors, in terms of expression and identity. It's about telling stories. It's about thinking about different kinds of techniques and technologies, about the business of fashion, and above all, it's about thinking about how can we achieve carbon neutrality and zero waste in this moment of climate emergency with the things that we like to do around fashion, design, performance, curating, looking at archives, looking at objects, looking at artifacts, thinking about digital platforms and communicative platforms of all kinds, film, media forms, social media forms, thinking about the cultural and historical moments uh, uh, and genealogies behind those, thinking about different tools that we might and methods that we might bring to bear on our objects of inquiry and our concepts of inquiry, psychology, social sciences, and so on. So to do this, we have uh, focused points, focal points in our college where research activities concentrate. These are around hubs, these are around the research students, hopefully you will join one of the cohorts of 85 students and you might join together with a research hub, one of the labs or one of the centre's activities that help us think about these broadly five areas that the college concentrates on, thinking about things like sustainability, community, design, identity, and well-being. One of our centers is called the Center for Sustainable Fashion, and it's about ways of making today. It is about cultural sustainability, but it's also thinking about community sustainability, 
decolonizing fashion is one of the research agendas, thinking about how we might assess and model new sustainable practices for both the industry of fashion and textiles, but also for fashion users within this moment of climate emergency. What is the earth logics at work when we are still thinking about individual style, um, when that individual is decentered by the consideration that we must make towards the ecology um, and consider the assemblages and the networks that come to create, co-create and co-design uh, our post-human subject of today. So those kinds of modelling thing issues are very important for this centre as they are for the Centre for Sustainable Curation, uh, which also looks at new models, processes and tools, but through the platform and lens of exhibition, curatorial practices uh, and museums and how things uh, might change or might be changed. Uh, this centre also works with a number of external industry partners. They provide you with unique uh, access to archives, contacts um, and expert researchers who would be your tutors. In the Centre for Fashion Business Research, uh, they're very much concentrated on innovations in textile and cosmetic sciences. Uh, they're looking towards new business models that use um, contemporary data analytics to engage in forecasting and trends. What are the new business models of the future? The circular business model is something that is not a sustainable practice. So what does it look like in the future? So in terms of our research uh, students at the moment, we have, uh, as I said, 85 uh, projects, different unique projects across the college. Some might be joined to centres, some might be with hubs and some partner externally with some of our um, industry partners. So for example, you might be engaged um, in footwear design and making uh, and we have a number of tutors who work at the Victorian uh, Albert Museum as well. Here's a slide that shows you the diversity, a snapshot of the diversity of current PhD student projects. And you can see here uh, the different topics uh, on the body um, and reconstructive surgery um, on the performance of wearables in a particular landscape, thinking about future manufacturing models, thinking about national identity through the platform of fashion curation, thinking about hip hop dance um, in performative spaces and that's joined with one of our industry partners, Sadler's Wells. The hubs, uh, as I mentioned, we have eight of those at the moment and they are very much focused on doing specific uh, work around um, fashion uh, ideas. Uh, the Disability Innovation Hub looks very much at uh, the body and identity, but also uh, new ways of textile, text, new forms of textile manufacture, uh, material manufacture um, to investigate uh, these current issues. And finally, I would just point you of the many, many uh, resources that we have, uh, including the amazing people, uh, researchers, and you would join with researchers that are supported and resourced by dedicated research facilities, including cosmetic science laboratories and digital laboratories. And what's very interesting about the um, library and uh, archive that every college has at LCF, uh, we have a dedicated um, teaching archive that's full of really amazing objects that could be classified as fashion, but they also could be classified as part of the history of London. These go, range back to the late 1600s uh, and they offer an amazing resource, one that you can access while working from home. There are a number of different object reading groups that you can do virtually, for, exist, for example. There are online workshops where we make things, practical workshops where we might in, investigate things. So lots of access from home activities that are important at the moment in terms of progressing your resor uh, research. But we like to think of these archives as a material resource for investigating the past, but also for making new futures. 
And the future, I should just point you to at LCF, will be housed at Stratford East, which is at the heart of London's ancient fashion and textile district on the River Thames. Um, so it's an amazing site that awaits you. So I look forward to receiving your PhD inquiries and applications to the London College of Fashion. Contact me, Felicity Coleman, anytime. There's my email address and I uh, hope to see you soon. Thank you. Hello and welcome to the University of the Arts London and the section on the London College of Communication in this research degree open evening. Really delighted that you've been able to join us. So my name is Pratap Bhagani. I'm a documentary filmmaker and Associate Dean of Research here at LCC. And um, if, if you take away one thing from um, this presentation, I, I hope it will be the thought, experience, maybe taste, of how the great practitioners, scholars, thinkers, other doctoral students are all pointed towards helping our PhD students realise and create, invent the new ideas that they really want to pursue. I think the best way I can give you a taste of that initially in these COVID days um, is to take you back into the college. So here's a bit of video for about a minute to give you a sense of what we do and uh, we'll start with a glimpse of our current PhD students show. Here at London College of Communication we're really excited to be showing for the first time a selection of our doctoral students work. We're particularly known for what we call practice-based research. In fact we're, we're one of the leaders in that for the last 20-25 years and one of the things that we're really keen to do is to shine a light on that fantastic work so that we can all benefit from the insights that our students are making. So the work I'm exhibiting in this wonderful show, uh, Unfolding Narratives, is called Spectrum Notes. The research question really is about can avant-garde film strategies really help to tell difficult stories? I'm a first year part-time student and my research is around narrative drawing and story worlds. I've just finished a PhD. My area of research was looking at scientific visual communication, specifically conceptual figures. So it's a very niche area, um, but I used to be a scientist, so it's an area that I know well from the science side. I really want to see what graphic design could, could bring to this area to improve it and help scientists create these figures. So um, we have uh, 47 PhD students currently. Many of them are practice based in the key areas of specialism of the college in moving image, film, television, um, in photography in graphic design, sound arts photo and uh, photojournalism. And we're coming up to our um, welcoming our 12 new students. Uh, so a small but beautifully uh, formed group. And we're very precise, coutured about how we make offers and the people that we um, who come to us, we think are a fantastic fit to the range of aptitudes, practice, insights and theoretical understandings that our community of scholars and practitioners have. So on arrival at LCC, um, you'll enter a really rich uh, community and research environment. And one of the essential aspects of that is the nuts and bolts of the practical things that are available to our doctoral students. So you have access to professional quality film, video and sound equipment or bookable advance from, in advance from the kit room, uh, which we run like a professional uh, production house. Um, we also have a fully kitted out and lit TV studio and um, a range of photographic dark rooms. Um, and obviously the whole range of library and um, archive resources. More about that later. Um, whilst our students are with us, many of them are either interested in or have aspirations to develop a career in um, teaching and in university life and research. And really important, we think, is to 
create the right kind of environment for our students to get some experience of teaching into our BA and MA programmes. And we have a GTA scheme which runs very well where we match students with course leaders and develop opportunities for students to teach from the particular kind of specialisms they're developing. Archives and special collections, another great strength for us. We've got famously the Stanley Kubrick archive, but there's a whole range of archive um, resources listed there, including um, the comic book collections, more about that to do with research hubs. We have the Her Noise archive, Thorold Dickinson, Philip Knightley and so on. Based at the college are two of the big university research centres, Photography in the Archive Research Centre Park and also Creative Research and Sound Arts Practice. Um, we have a whole range of doctoral student seminars. Um, there's a particular cluster that's super effective in the sound arts area, uh, including a student soiree where people can explore their practice and ideas in a more relaxed environment, um, that which runs alongside the specific PhD supervisions. Our research centres are super busy. Um, our Photography and Archive Research Centre have just re-kitted out the galleries. We have a new show ready to go on Northern Ireland um, and exploring the nature of conflict uh, that we co-curated. And Acts of Air, a big festival of sound arts currently running. Look out for that. And then nearly at the end now, overview of our research hubs. Well, we've got a cluster of different areas of subject practice where a range of different um, colleagues uh, in um, practice areas, in theoretical and conceptual thinking, cluster around the themes listed here. Comic research hubs have just had a, a really um, successful, huge international conference exploring the dynamics, narratives, social justice questions, among other things, in the um, comics research area, uh, design activism, graphic subcultures, particular specialism here in punk um, uh, and uh, other um, subcultures related to you know, musical identities as well. Um, the Screen Research Forum was founded by our emeritus professor William Rayban, very significant um, research um, leader in developing what moving image practice research looks and feels like and that's now developing into its next phase um, and then more to point out to you newly launched or just a few months ago the health arts and design research hub which as a thema thematic has connected lots of different discrete subject areas and although it was born in LCC, it's connected all the colleges of the university and a huge amount of interest in it beyond the university here. And then hot off the press, right at the bottom, the branded content research hub, um, about to be led by our new professor in the media school, Jonathan Hardy. And um, that's about to launch uh, at the beginning of term next week. So thanks very much for listening really look forward to your questions and you know most importantly really hope that you carry on encouraged um, that there's a fantastically rich community here keen to support uh, your aspirations to realize that that creative work practice theoretical thinking whatever form it takes and to really bring it into the world thanks very much Hello, my name is Tom Corby. I'm the Associate Dean of Research at Central St. Martins. Um, I'm responsible for all research activity at CSM, um, and that encompasses also the PhD programme. Um, as you know, CSM is a, a very famous and... Um... Hello, my name is Tom Corby. I'm the Associate Dean of Research at CSM, so I'm, like, my role is to be responsible for um, all research activity at CSM. Um, as you know, CSM is a very famous and esteemed art school. It's been around since 1854 in one form or another. Um, we have a very large amount of um, students here, so about four and a half thousand students of all kinds, undergraduate, postgraduate, masters. We have 90 PhD students in our PhD programme. 
um, about half, two and a half thousands of our um, students are international and they represent 95 different nations. So a very diverse student body, um, very many different cultures. Um, we have 550 academic staff working at CSM and about 90 technical staff. So um, very large and vibrant um, student body and, and place. Um, as you know, the PhD journey um, involves making an original and independent contribution to knowledge. Um, I'm sure you've researched what that means and you've you've come to some kind of understanding of why you want to do a PhD. So I'm not going to go into the details of the PhD process specifically, um, but a PhD normally takes around um, full time, three to four years and part time, anything up to eight years. At CSM, we provide a supervisory team of expert researchers to guide you through that process. Um, we have different types of PhD at CSM. We have traditional theory or historical text-based PhDs, which normally produce a thesis of around 80,000 words. And we also have practice-based PhDs where um, you produce a thesis of around 40,000 words. And that comes with a significant component of practice, whatever your practice is, design, architecture, performance, fine art. Um, we cover just about everything in the art design field here. Um, it's worth looking at some recent PhDs. Um, um, Giorgio, um, Giorgio's PhD, which he's recently completed, investigated um, British workshop practices of making commercial um, ceramic tableware, um, focusing on the potter's wheel. It was a practice-led study. Um, situated within, within research on contemporary pottery and uh, more generally on craft and design. Very interesting um, project um, involved um, some very fascinating anthropological studies of uh, potters in, in context. Um, John um, John's PhD um, again was another practice-based PhD exploring um, ways in which production comprehension of drawn narratives and comics are structured by metaphor and um, John's work really scrutinized the, the idea of uh, visual metaphors in in comic narratives and went on to make an argument um, that um, suggested that the perceptual character of depiction in comic cultures um, needs to go beyond the idea of um, um, visual metaphors and again it was a great project and a really interesting body of visual work that went alongside it as well. Um, in, in contrast, um, Amy's recent PhD on um, tissue engineered textiles um, um, operated at the intersection of traditional textile design and production and um, biotechnology. So you may, may, may not know that we have um, a biotech lab at CSM where lots of experimental biotechnology and design work happens. So Amy's work grew out of that. Um, and it explored the creation of handcrafted living complex and dynamic architectures utilizing textile techniques um, and she ended up with a set of um, design tools for designers working in um, biotextile contexts um, absolutely fascinating very cutting edge work and another example of the kind of diversity of, of um, PhD research we, we carry out at CSM just some more pictures here of the lab work. Um, in your PhD journey, um, we support you with multiple um, workshops, initiatives, um, community activities. So as a, as a large and diverse PhD program, um, probably the most interesting thing that you'll encounter at, at CSM is your other students. So your other students and your cohort are very important in getting a sense of um, getting the most out of your PhD. Um, and you meet those people through our PhD workshops. Um, you meet them through our research methods courses in which you learn how to develop arguments and how to evidence your PhD. We have things called test lab presentations where you get to test and um, disseminate your research findings to your students and get feedback from staff and students. And we have other activities like the Sensing Site um, seminars where um, which are specifically focused on artistic research methods. So we have a whole range of activities in and around your PhD 
that complement what you're doing and, and bring you into a community of other researchers. Aside from your PhD, immediate PhD peers, um, CSM also has a very active um, re, um, research culture. So almost all staff are either um, active professional practitioners or researchers operating at the top of the game. Um, we host numerous um, funded research projects and groups, aside from um, individual researchers. And um, some of these um, recent projects include um, topics around art and climate change, decolonizing art and museums, archaeology of film fashion, socially responsible design and many others. And you're part of that culture and you get to participate in events run by these um, groups and, um, and projects as well while you're here. Um, CSM also hosts um, independent research centres and institutes. So after all, it's a contemporary art research centre which looks at issues of um, value in contemporary art. Design Against Crime looks at kind of um, social, social and equitable forms of design um, in, in, in wider kind of social cultures. And the Social Design Institute um, is a very large pedagogic and research institute which specifically looks at um, issues of design as they um, feed into policy decisions and kind of experimental and socially situated design practices. So all, all this is part of the wider research culture that you enter as you as you join CSM as a research student and as you move through your research um, your research journey with us. Um, aside from all the research activity in and around CSM that's, that goes on, um, we have numerous numerous and um, partnerships and collaborations with major international organizations including um, Tate Britain, Modern Tate Exchange, British Fashion Council, um, Victorian Albert Museum, Welcome Collection, um, scientific organizations like the British Antarctic Survey. So we have many, many where we're, we're connected to many networks of scientific and cultural and art and design organizations and um, you, you will benefit from that as PhD students as well. Um, that's a very, very quick trot through research culture and what we offer at CSM in terms of um, a PhD programme. Um, just finally want to leave you with some names. Um, so if you come to CSM, the PhD programme is run by Caterina Albano and she's helped by Marquetta, who's um, the Deputy Programme Coordinator. I am the overall head of research at CSM and um, Debbie Kenny is the research coordinator and she um, she deals with all inquiries, research, news and advice. So Debbie is somebody who you'd have a lot of contact with alongside Katerina and Marquetta. Um, and that's it for the moment. You'll be um, going on to other presentations now and getting the chance to talk to people. Um, I hope that was useful and maybe see you next year. Hello, my name is Professor Malcolm Quinn. I'm Associate Dean of Research for Camberwell, Chelsea and Wimbledon Colleges of Art at UAL. And I'm just going to spend a few minutes telling you about the resources and opportunities for PhD researchers at Camberwell, Chelsea and Wimbledon. And I'm opening with a slide of one of our researchers, Professor Dan Sturgis, opening a conference on the Bauhaus recently. And events like Dan's and our PhD student curriculum, which I'll tell you more about in a minute, and the activities of our research centres and the research events we hold across the three schools of fine art, design and performance together form a very rich network of symposia, seminars and events for you to access. I'm now going to talk about the PhD programme in particular and mention, first of all, that research degree, research degree students at Camberwell, Chelsea, Wimbledon have the opportunity to lead and take part in an annual exhibition that normally takes place in the autumn term of the following academic year, uh, but this year takes place in the spring term. So it takes place in the second year of your PhD this, because of COVID this year in the spring. And here we have two images from the rather excellent PhD student exhibition in 2019 held in the Triangle Space at Chelsea. 
Uh, we also have a residency program in collaboration with the British School at Athens for uh, post-registration second year students. And here we see an image of Larice Douglas, who was the bursary holder for the BSA residency in 2017-18. She's now nearly finished her PhD. And the uh, residency includes a bursary, studio and accommodation, School of Athens, which specializes in archeology span and ancient history. Next, I just want to tell you about our MPhil PhD seminar series, which complements the renewal program that UAL runs. And we have a first year seminar series for first year students only, eight sessions throughout the first year. We have a confirmation discussion group run by, and there's a picture here of him in makeup, I hasten to add, David Cross, the artist David Cross runs our confirmation discussion group. And currently Professor Paul Caldwell also runs a finishes group. And those two groups have three sessions per year. Every other year we run an event called Reflections on the Viva, where recently completed students return to talk about their Viva experience. And we have a lecture from the returning British School of Athens resident previously mentioned. We are very proud to offer a graduate teaching scheme at the three colleges, which offers doctoral students who've completed registration, again, second year students, that is, the opportunity to teach on selected BA and MA courses across the three colleges. Uh, information on training, how to apply in the scheme is circulated annually by our research manager. Uh, and here we see a picture of a seminar, which was led by one of our ex-GTA students, Tom Hellier Cardwell, who is now a senior lecturer at um, uh, Canwell. Next, I want to talk about our research events programme. Uh, as I briefly mentioned, these are held across the three schools, one event per year for design, one event for performance, and one event for fine art. And I'm showing you an image here from the design event, which took place recently as a, an online only uh, conference. It was called Blame the Tools. And here's a slide uh, of a presentation by Bridget Harvey, who is an ex PhD student uh, of Camberwell, Chelsea, and Wimbledon, who is now uh, lecturing uh, at the three colleges. So, again, like Tom, it shows you how some of our PhD students end up in the teaching programs. Uh, now, I wanted to talk about uh, one of our research centres. We have two research centres hosted in the three colleges. Uh, research centres work across the university and they work globally, but they are housed in particular colleges. And we're very proud that the Centre for Circular Design is housed at Chelsea. And the Centre for Circular Design uh, emerged from textiles research, research on sustainability, but now deals with the question of circular economies, whole economies focused on zero waste which have emerged from a concern, as it says here, with materials, models and mindsets uh, that are designing for our future selves and for a, a, a survivable environment that we can all live in in the future. I also want to mention uh, the other research centre, TRAIN, which stands for Transnational Art, Identity and Nation, led by Professor Paul Goodwin, who uh, recently finished a uh, exhibition, curated an exhibition, amazing show called We Will Walk at the Turner Contemporary Margate, focused on art and resistance in the American South. He leads Train, which focus on the trans, tra focuses on the transnational, on migration, on critiques of the nation state. It looks at art practice, art history and theory, and has many, many esteemed scholars uh, in its ranks. I'll just uh, move on now to just, just briefly discussing the resources we offer. We have a re research team at Camberwell, Chelsea, Wimbledon. We have a research manager, Ellie Pitkin, a research events administrator, Gabrielle Grigoyeva, and a research funding manager, Nick Tatchell, who are based at Chelsea. We have a space dedicated for, to research students equipped with Network Max, a printer, et cetera, et cetera, and that is available for student use only and of course has now been made COVID safe. We have access to workshops, uh, PC students have access to workshops across the three colleges negotiated with the technical and resources staff. 
that includes wood, metal and ceramic workshops, foundry, audiovisual workshop uh, and professional standard photography studio. There's no studio space for PhD students, unfortunately, we can't offer that, but you can book spaces across the three colleges and you can also uh, book AV and IT equipment and book it out, take it out of the loan store. Just I'm going to finish by mentioning our special collections and archives, uh, which in Campbell we have archives on artist books, it's Dino Hoy's collection. At Wimbledon we have an artist books collection and theatre programmes and at Chelsea, as you can see, we have an awful lot of collections ranging from the African Caribbean, Asian and African Art in Britain archive, the Gilbert and George Ephemera collection, Stephen Willett's archive, an extremely rich programme I'm very proud of, of special collections and archives at Chelsea. So as you can see, there are plenty of resources, plenty of support for your PhD at Camberwell, Chelsea, Wimbledon, and we'd be delighted if you come to study with us. Many thanks. Hello and welcome to this talk on research at the UAL Creative Computing Institute. My name is Professor Mick Grierson and I'm here to tell you about the sorts of work our PhD students do, the sorts of work that we do, and the kinds of supervisors you might get to work with if you apply to do a PhD with us. So uh, what's the CCI? Well, the CCI is a new institute focused on computer science, the creative industries and the arts. And what we want to do is we want to ensure future technologies are shaped by creative thought as much as possible. And that includes in art practice. We have three main themes to do that. Creativity, machine learning and AI. Human computer interaction and platforms. And big data and digital citizenship. So what does that actually mean? Well, last year I worked with Rob Del Naya to make an exhibition as part of the AI More Than Human exhibit that went across the museums and galleries and is still touring for five years. And this was a, a celebration of Massive Attack's album, Mezzanine, which we built an AI for, which used entirely cutting edge technology. And this AI is constantly remixing that album to people who are visiting the exhibition. In addition, we recently worked with Arca to produce an AI system that allowed her to create a soundtrack for the lobby of the Museum of Modern Art. And this is part of a large installation with sculptural technology components. And it's really, really something else. It's quite an interesting piece. This is all part of a project which CCI are undertaking in collaboration with Google, Goldsmiths, Durham, Sussex, funded by the Arts and Humanities Research Council. It's a million pound project to change the way that people make sound, music and the visual arts. Mimic is a platform which we also use in our teaching and that lots of our researchers use because it allows you to program and create computer graphics, interactive systems right there in the platform. And you can hack away and make changes as you're developing your research. You can also learn to program and we have lots of different ways for helping you do that. Some of these tools that are in the Mimic platform are based on earlier research we've done, including the Rapid Mix Toolkit, which is a toolkit for making it easier for people to learn how to use machine learning. We've got a lot of PhD students here at the moment who are interested in machine learning and also physical computing. One of them is Jen Sykes, who is actually uh, based in Glasgow and is a teacher at Glasgow School of Art, a lecturer in physical computing there. Another of our PhD students at CCI is Angus Main, who is a lecturer at the Royal College of Art, who is working with Google on a National Productivity Investment Fund project to explore how AI can influence design. Further to that, we have another PhD student called uh, Walteri, who is focusing on how to understand the kinds of narratives people might be interested in reading. And that's another NPIF funded scholarship where he's working specifically with Unbound, who are an, a company that uses crowdfunding to finance entirely new and innovative forms of narrative fiction. Another of our students is Memo Acton, who is well known in the field of creative AI. Memo is known for producing a number of works, including these sorts of works which use creative AI to change how you can interact with uh, artificial intelligence systems. Uh, 
And what you can see here is Memo is in real time controlling an AI system by using these different bits of rubbish that he's found around his flat. And so as the video goes on, you can see that he changes his AI model and he's able to sculpt with fire by moving around objects. And there's another interesting part later on where he creates clouds and also flowers. And you can see here that his hand is being used to generate this floral shape and texture. Other students that we have include Terence Broad, who uses AI to create a series of still image and video works. His most recent series of works include Teratome, which is inspired by mo the most recent um, uh, progress in artificial intelligence, particularly face generation. And it takes face generating models, which have cost millions of pounds to create, and uses them and actually bends them and distorts them to create unrealistic faces. Well, I would say they're realistic faces, but not of humans that you may have seen. Another of our students is Hadil Ayub. Hadil has created a glove which turns sign language into speech. And this is a physical computing project with an onboard computer and machine learning to track hand gestures. Another of our students has produced interactive, immersive, real-time, machine learning driven installations. So these are multi-screen installation works which are designed to be immersive. So large audiences can enjoy multi-screen works with up to six screens at once with systems that are controlled by machine learning in real time. So who can supervise you? We have a number of supervisors, including myself, and I think my background is reasonably well known in creative AI. Also, in AI, machine learning, and human computer interaction, we have Rebecca Fiebrink, and Rebecca is excellent uh, and has lots of supervision expertise, particularly in areas of HCI and machine learning. She also authored The Weckinator, which is one of the most popular pieces of software for artists using machine learning. In addition, we have Dr. Vali Laliotti, who runs the Innovation Consultancy and is a, an RCA researcher and academic. She's also our program director. Vali's very interested in XR, AR and VR with a strong track record working, including with people such as RCA and Imperial on AR applications for the arts. In addition, we have a new member of staff, Anna Troisi, who's very focused on arts practice, including a project which incorporates artworks and the sounds of Kenyan communities to create an oral archive of their experiences in their day-to-day -day lives. So they're the kinds of people you can work with if you come and study at CCI. The sorts of skills that we're looking for is a mixture of design and creativity experience, but also, and very importantly, a willingness to engage. A willingness to engage with programming, a willingness to engage with technology, and a willingness to be part of a community which isn't frightened of technology, but wants to rule it and command it and take ownership of it for the creative arts and industries. And um, that's all I've got to say. If you're interested in studying with us, please field any questions and they'll be forwarded to us or send me an email and you can find my contact information on the UAL website. I look forward to hearing from you. Hello, I'm Lucy Steeds and the convener of Renewal, which is a research network at UAL for doctoral studies. Every year, Renewal offers a programme of events for MPhil and PhD students across the university and our partner colleges. There are Renewal sessions designed to navigate you through the key stages of a research degree. And these we cover formalising your project plan at the outset, all the way through to final completion and oral examination or viva towards the end. We also look at life beyond a research degree. Renewal also offers training sessions that focus on the development of core skills. Some of these will be relevant for you all, and some more specific to particular types of research, dependent on your focus, methodology, field or practice. 
at the same time renewal offers a platform for you to progress your own research through its presentation and discussion you'll speak about your project to ual peers and staff in a symposium convened at the end of your first year and then again when you confirm as either mphil or phd with an initial body of work under your belt these are great opportunities to deepen, widen and clarify your own understanding with the input of the extended research community at UAL. Some parts of renewal are compulsory, for instance, the induction sessions in the first week, which get you started in your research journey with us, and the presentation of your work at two critical stages in its development. Much of renewal is optional, these sessions are there for you to try out whenever you feel you need them, and more than once, if that feels useful. Your participation in the renewal programme should be planned in conversation with your supervisory team. Personal and professional development planning is a key aspect of the research degree at UAL, and you'll review your training needs annually, following up on initial discussions with your supervisors. Of course, there's lots of research development work that will take place outside of renewal. For instance, when you participate in academic, professional and public events organised by your particular college, research institute or taking place outside UAL. But renewal is the university base for your doctoral work and I'm here to anchor you in that university-wide community. Some parts of the programme that I offer come on a regular basis when they're tried and, tried and tested. And some elements I alter annually in response to what I perceive students needing in particular. So I always welcome feedback and suggestions. Renewal operates across colleges, institutes, cohorts and stages. Those at the beginning of their projects will meet each other and also those further along. All of you as students will have access to stellar academics and practitioners across the university beyond those working with you specifically as part of your supervisory team. Operating as part of the research network at UAL is wonderful because our students and the staff supervising them are often wonderful. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to contact me. Hello, I'm Jane Nobbs. Research Manager for Postgraduate Research at University of the Arts London. I lead the research student team and together we manage the administration and processes relating to the research student journey from inquiry right through to award and becoming a member of our alumni. I'm going to talk to you about the process for application for a research degree at UAL. Please read the guidelines on the website. There's a very helpful document here, guidance on how to write a research proposal. Do download this and read it carefully before submitting your application. Also, please use the subheadings suggested within this document, as this greatly helps the person assessing your application. You might also like to look at our UAL staff researchers on the website. Here you can look for researchers who have similar research interests to your own. If you find somebody whose interests map to your own, you might like to suggest them as a potential supervisor when you make your application. You can also look at student research projects on the website. It's a good idea to see what our students are researching. And here you might also find students who are, whose research interests align with your own. All applications must be submitted through the UAL online student system. And our sub submission deadlines for entry in 2021 are 11th of November 2020. You must apply to this deadline if you want to apply for AHRC funding and the 12th of April 2021. UAL is a member of the TECNE Arts and Humanities Research Council Consortium. There are 10 members of this consortium and being a member of this consortium means that people with an offer of a place at UAL can apply for Techne studentship which covers fees and maintenance. The deadline for applications at UAL for a Techne studentship is Friday 15th of January 2021. You submit this application through the Techne portal 
and this opens on the 2nd of November. You must hold an offer of a place at UAL to apply for Techne. There is also government loans for doctoral students available. These are up to 26,445. That is for the whole duration of your PhD and they are not means tested. They're available for part-time and full-time students and the length of the, the loan can be eight years maximum. English residents who are age 59 or under and without research council studentships can apply for these loans and they can be combined with a master's loan debt. There's Q&A at the end of this event, but if, if anything is not answered, or if you want any further information, please do get in touch with us at researchdegrees at arts.ac.uk. We look forward to hearing from you. Thank you. My name is Daniela. I'm a doctoral candidate at Central St Martins, one of the constituent colleges at, St. at University of the Arts London, and most people will refer to me as the pensions lady. So my research actually explores the interrelationships between structure, agency and gendered pensions outcomes in the UK. But ultimately, what my research looks to do is to create a case for a feminist pensions policy pathway. And the research is funded as part of a joint studentship between King's College London and Central St Martins, which looks to fund a number of projects that explore design and social policy. So there's a central problem that sits at the heart of my research, and that is that pensions are gendered. And interestingly, um, regardless of your socioeconomic background, whether you're married, whether or not you have children, um, by dint of being a woman, your income in retirement will be less than your male counterparts. And that sets an interesting problem that says, well, why is that? Why is it that pensions are gendering to that degree? Especially since, as one of my supervisors pointed out, 2006, women have always lived longer than men. Women have always had fewer opportunities to save, had more restricted job opportunities, lower pay, interrupted careers. Women have babies. Um, but women are also more likely to experience poverty towards the end of their lives as well. Before that was because women were widows. That image comes from a place. Um, but now more women are actually more likely to be divorced as well. So what is it that we might be able to do to remove those gendering effects from pensions or from the pension system? So my research is particularly focused on the interrelationship between the UK pension system, which we've already established is a gendering UK pension system. So it's got differential effects for men and women, um, but also individual women in terms of their agency and how women think about and make decisions about whether actively or in response to their environment, their own financial futures. And if we do understand that aspect of agency more, how might the UK pension system respond in light of what we know and what we understand so that it becomes about systemic institutional change rather than indiv individual women having to change in order to meet the, the fallacies of the existing system? So you might well ask at this stage, what on earth has this got to do with design? This is an art school. This is you know, University of the Arts London, and we're talking about pensions. So my particular research is positioned within um, a, a way of thinking, a particular school of research, which is around design for policy. And there are emerging researchers within this particular space, um, but a lot of that comes back to a very particular view about how we think about design and, and what we think about the possibilities of design, which comes back to Herbert Simon, who, yes, was an economist, but also um, thinking about design, talked about it as a tool for understanding as well as acting. And Herbert Simon really famously talks about design, about helping us get to the way that things ought to be. And it really helps as a way of thinking about action aimed at changing where we sit at the moment into where we would want to be in terms of the future. 
and so that we could think about design as a way of keeping options open for the future, which is so important for design such as mine, which comes within the School of Critical Futures, which says that actually there are multiple futures, there are multiple possibilities. Nobody has a handle on what the future will be. And so that by broadening our imagination in terms of what the future could be, that we open up the possibilities of where that might take us and what that compels us to do in terms of the present. So my research is specifically institutional and it takes an institutional approach. And I imagine pensions as institutions. So these are ways of thinking that are that codify how we think about ourselves, how we think about our own futures, how we think about funding and policy. And in turn, we would think about that in terms of institutional change rather than individual change. And so we've got three different types of pension that operate within one system. And that's actually globally quite unique that we have a pension system within the UK where even the idea about what a pension is, is contested. So we've got social protection pensions, which are really the first form of pension that ever existed. And they exist now within the form of things like pension credits. And it's based on that notion that pensioners are people who can't afford to get money from anywhere else. And ultimately that needs to be provided by the state. So it's pure welfare, welfare in its purest form. We've got occupational pensions. So when we talk about auto enrollment, when we talk about behavioral responses, for example, they tend to be linked to the occupational pension, which is linked to paid employment. So that in itself is a gendered term. Um, and we think about those as financialized products, for example. So we think about pension funds and pension governance. But we also have the state pension and the state pension has its own logic. It has its own history. It comes from a post-war idea of community. And so those values, that those competing ideas that we see played out within the media, played out within our own minds, played out within policy, all jostle for space. And so when we think about designing an intervention or designing change, it's within a space where even the idea about what it is, becomes an argument or, or becomes a narrative that we have to develop and we have to shape and that we have to frame. So when I look at design and when I look at what I'm designing, ultimately it's a way of thinking about inequalities. And unfortunately for me, there wasn't an easy framework that I could pick off the shelf and say, actually, if we use that and apply that and use it and do it, then we can look at what we can do with pensions. So I've really had to go back to the canon of research to say, how could we think about something that is rooted in the past, that we want to compel us to do something in the present so that we can change where we might go in the future? And looking at that from an institutional perspective, I've really drawn on Margaret Archer, who is a critical realist, to think about the ways in which institutions themselves condition how we think and how through individual agency and reflexivity, we might think about or change how we think about those institutions. And in turn, as those institutions ultimately are created by us, created by how we think about things, that we in turn might be able to imagine a different future so that it's orientated towards change, but change within a longer time frame. And what I think is exciting about this is that you can actually use it and apply it to different institutional contexts when thinking about inequalities. And when we think about the urgency of where we sit right now within this present, that that's a real opportunity to think about how we might design and really affect change. So the contributions to knowledge that I hope to make through my PhD research are really understanding how women's actions and decisions are being rationalised right now in light of the current UK's pension system, but with a focus on an under-researched group. So really looking at women who've been born from the late 20th century onwards, but actually thinking, well, if these are women who are supposed to have had ostensibly more gender equality than anyone who's really come before, why is it that we still expect that we'll have gendered pensions outcomes really when we're looking towards the end of, of even this century? But also that it's theory testing. So examining, examining those interrelationships between structure and agency, but in the context of gendered inequalities. Through my work at Central St Martins, it's been a real opportunity to 
change how I think as a researcher. I've definitely come from a very traditional research background, so social sciences, business school, Russell Group, and there's a particular way of doing research and a particular way of approaching research. But I think one of the real advantages of studying and looking at um, issues within a design context, within an art school, is the ability to be able to take risks. So the ability to be able to test ideas, there is no wrong in some ways, and that helps you to be able to say, well, actually, if I'm able to look at things in a way that people haven't done before, that that can be generative and using different things. So developing things like games. So I was able to go to Oslo and um, play a game with UNESCO policymakers like the driest in the world um, on a game that I'd made around pensions and women, um, able to speak to uh, the South Bank Centre, to Women of the World. Um, I did a three month placement using precisely these methods, so design methods and methodologies as part of the cabinet office and really opening up the conversation to be able to think creatively, to be able to engage creatively, because ultimately that is part of, of a research method, of a research approach that this school really does better than I think anyone does anywhere. So I leave really with the idea that working at UAL makes anything really possible, I think, within the realm of research and, and methods are open and new to you. Um, but I leave also with the idea that there really is space to engage collectively within an environment that is both stimulating um, and really at the forefront of where um, research and, and human endeavour really can go to. Thank you.